unit four. With his Kimmich team, or Kimmich, which is, by the way, a chemical plant. And the goaltender getting the start tonight is Alexei Chevikov. Let's say 24 years of age, 6'1", 191 pounds. And Mario Gosselin will start in the nets for the Los Angeles Kings. He and Carol Kennedy have been sharing the goaltending. Rudy was spectacular in a 6 0 win over the New York Rangers here on Saturday night. He gets the rest. Sends Kuzelnitsky to center ice. Wayne Gretzky is playing on the left side. And immediately, Los Angeles dumps the puck into the Soviet Union zone. The captain, Smirnov playing it out of there. Alexander Smirnov. Who oh, oh, made the tour last year with the Soviet Central Red Army team is out on the forward line. Along with Tita. The Bracer playing the puck out of the Los Angeles zone. Gretzky gave it right back to him. Bracer, the Czech player, put from high off his stick and up into the seat. There is the captain of the Los Angeles Kings, Wayne Gretzky. Several of their regulars not in the lineup tonight, but Wayne Gretzky is. And this is not his first introduction to Soviet hockey either, is it? No, it wouldn't. Without Wayne playing this game, it would take a lot away from him. I think the, the people that would be most disappointed if Wayne didn't play would be, you know, the Soviets. They look forward to Wayne. They really do. That. He's sort of the, the benchmark. He's the guy that they try to compare everything with. And a look at the Soviet player bench. Vladimir Vasilyev is the coach of this team. Giving. That is not Valerie Vasilyev. Long-time fans of Soviet, Soviet hockey will remember Valerie as outstanding. This man's name is Vladimir. They say that he's rather unorthodox, but most of the Soviet coaches have a certain style, and we're ready to get a penalty here. First penalty of the game will go against the Soviet Union. Albert Malkin took his man down, and the penalty call now by referee Bill McCurry will be for tripping, and Los Angeles will go to the power play one minute into the opening period. Well, Jake's amazing. You've got these names down already. I'm just going to try to follow you, my friend. You know, it's sort of a very soft type of call. Bernie Nichols working through the crease a little bit, and I don't know, he might have skated right over the goalkeeper's uh, stick, but whatever. It's, uh, when you're at home, you get those calls, so, you know, if you would be in the Soviet Union, well, it would have been looking just the opposite. Terbikov in goal. He's the young man that was disciplined by the Soviet Hockey Association last year. He came over with the B team, and in Regina, Saskatchewan, he was accused of shoplifting. Nobody said uh, whether he was guilty or not, but the fact that the Soviet Sports Committee last season disciplined him, you have to think that they felt that he was indeed uh, guilty of some misdemeanor. But he gets the start here tonight, and he has been outstanding. First half of the season, Kimmich with the best record. Beating up on everybody, really the race is for second and third place right now. Jeez, that's a story in itself, but the Red Army team, you know, they say they don't rebuild, they sort of reload. But I think they are rebuilding this year, and they're looking for the 92, 94 Olympic Games. They will be over here later on. That's Marty McSorley playing the puck to the left point. Kings can't hold it in. And Himmick starts out of the zone. Coming to center ice is Tutino. Shot turned aside by Gosselin. Ends up over on the left side. Played one around the boards, and Nichols dumps it out through center ice. Robotai tied up. And here's Brian Benny. And he acquired from St. Louis. He's given it to Bernie Nichols. Plays it to Gretzky. Shoots. Right by Pernikov. And the Soviet team is third down the ice. One minute, two seconds remaining in this power play. Marty McSorley moves in. Shot went around the defenseman. Salyan in. And he went wide in the net. Jake's remember a few years ago, Marty McSorley never saw any ice time in that power play. Now he gets a lot of it. He's been red hot recently for the Kings. Gretzky playing it back to Peter Brazler. Brazler had it knocked off his stick. It comes out to center right. Delapukin out there killing off his penalty. Nothing better than a check trying to beat the Russian. Or the Soviet, I should say. And the goaltender, Chevrikov, covering the puck. Way behind the net, up against the boards here. 30 seconds remaining in the penalty. Look at the Soviet players here this morning. They are very young. In fact, two of their youngest players aren't with them. They left a 19-year-old, a couple of 19-year-olds back. And, uh, they're going to Moscow, as a matter of fact, to practice with a junior team in preparation for the World Junior Championships, which will be getting underway right after Christmas, December 21st, I believe it is, in Finland. Yeah, they had two 19-year-olds they left at home and one 17-year-old. That's the Red Army team uh, this year, Chiefs. They are a very young hockey club. As I said, they've got to rebuild. I think it'll be good 
for the National League and the Soviet Union. A little bit more parity, I guess. Some, some new rivalries being developed. And it's not the same old whole hum thing for the last 14 years the Red Army team has won that championship. Well, not at all. Breaking in off the right side for Los Angeles, Michael Makula, fired last week from the New York Islanders. Remember that guy, Jake? That was here. That long top of him tonight. Very disappointed in the trade. Shot. Didn't expect it. He said, you have to make the most of it. I'm not the first to be traded, and I won't be the last. So Hemmick is able to kill off the penalty. Malgin is out of the penalty box. There is no score. We have played just over three minutes of the opening period. Soviet playing the puck into the Los Angeles zone. Baldoff is out there now. He's another outstanding player. There are two Baldoff players. Brothers, you see the Kings with an opportunity in the goal mouth. It's right out of there. The right side, Baldoff, the center ice. Andre Baldoff, the 26-year-old. Kings take over deep in their own zone again. That's moving up the left wing boards. Jay Miller out on the ice. They have the opening goal, the winning goal against the New York Rangers. Lindholm plays it to the right side. There's Allison, moves right in. Jamaica about to make the save. The puck comes loose momentarily. Now is covered at the defense. And a face-off coming in the Soviet Union zone. There is no score. You're watching the Kings of the Soviet Where this team is from, this Hinnick team. So it is a small city, they tell me, from a suburb of Moscow. Interesting looking uniforms, aren't they? Well, I think it's a good looking uniform. So I think when we associate the, the Soviet hockey teams, you remember in the early 70s, James, and, and even 10 years ago, how they would be drab and, and the uniforms would be, well, I don't know how we could say somewhat complimentary, but even the equipment, the skates, the, uh, the gloves and whatever. So they made some great improvements by getting some money, some unique ways of recent buying new stuff. I wonder how they got that money. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they we said do, before. They yeah. said before they're exporting hockey players and importing wheat. <laughs> you know, these are brand new uniforms. All the equipment that they're wearing provided as part of this arrangement of the teams coming over here. You see that uh, CCM insignia, sticks, and helmets, everything is brand new. There is no score. We're four and a half minutes into the opening period, and it can't clear the zone. Benning set it across, and Robitaille's shot is blocked. Goaltender, there we go. Right up the boards, but not out. Here's Robitaille. Centered it back. Benning shot. And off the skate. Picked up again by the King. A little stick work here, drawing the attention of the fans. Puck held in. Scott Bukestad. Up from New Haven, the American Hockey League out on the ice. He's got started the season with an injury problem, but has really responded recently. A long shot. Turned aside. Pad save as Goslin put the right pad up from the crowd. There's going to be a hooking penalty on the play. You look at Mario Gosselin. Quite an acquisition from Quebec. Well, Gosselin is very familiar with the European style of play and how they will shoot off passes and how they will probably make the extra pass being a member of the 1984 Canadian Olympic team. Well, he does give Los Angeles that all important depth that any good hockey club needs. The days of one good goalkeeper is going to be hard to play in the National Hockey League with the parity and the depth that that's being developed. Well, a hooking penalty on Tim Waters of Los Angeles. Kings a man short here. With us on the bench tonight, Cap Raider. And Rick Wilson handling the coaching chores. Tom Webster watching from upstairs. It's in communication with them, but not handling the team on the bench. The Kings have dumped it down the ice. Board number four, second in. You know, the first five minutes are going to be an indication. The, the Soviets, being the first uh, visit here to North America, are very timid. Almost like they're a little shy. They don't know what to expect. L.A., they're saying, geez, uh, you know, it's another ball game tonight now, 80 games plus playoffs. What do we have to do, play another exhibition game for? That's not really on their high and their priority, even though it goes for a great cause to develop money for the pension plan. Look at the Los Angeles bench. Yeah, the money is the important thing, I guess, for both the, both teams' uh, perspectives, in particular the, the Soviets, because it's an infusion of new money to their program. And for the players, all 21 NHL teams, since the series began, Way back to the 70s, over $18 million has been kicked into the pension fund. So it is important. Everybody worries about injuries in games like this. I think last year here in L.A., Bobby Carpenter broke his hand, Jigs, if we remember. That's right. Yeah, and they, uh, they look at that as a situation that is one of those things. You don't like to have it happen. The money is 
Delapokin, Natalie Delapokin, 21 now. 6'1", 181 pounds. I mentioned earlier, he made the trip last year with Central Red Army. Detop on that draw, number 13 for this Guinea team. Game centering one across. Forecheck is Allison. He and Kruselniski up front. Still a minute and 19 seconds for Hayden McGuire's penalty. Into the center ice area. And the shot off right wing here by Jinko is turned aside. Here comes the defenseman and it's Allison over center ice. Kalyanin plays it up the boards. And it's offside as the Kings bring it right back into the Soviet zone. This team is the first to arrive. They'll play six games. That's Rick Wilson back in the Los Angeles bench tonight. Here, Nimick will go to Edmonton for the game on Wednesday. We'll be in Calgary on Friday, and we'll have that game. Nimick and the Calgary Flames, no strangers. They played one another as part of that friendship tour. Calgary winning 4-2. to two. And they make stops in Detroit, Washington, and St. Louis. And there is the owner of the Los Angeles Kings, Bruce McDowell. He's going to join me on the first intermission tonight. Getting ready to go to Florida to attend the governor's meetings. Ask him about what we can expect out of those meetings, what they'll be discussing. The expansion that we'll find out from Bruce. 48 seconds remaining in the penalty to Waters. There is no score if you've just joined us. Kostrykov over on left wing, handling the puck. Played it back to the blue line. The ball out shot was blocked. And set it up again. Slot is a shame that they can't get the puck to him, and the Kings fail to clear the zone. It's all getting over on the far point now. Dumps it in around the boards. Jarpchenko holds up here and fires one. I just missed the net. Bouncing back along the boards. Salgan. Salgan puts it back in the net. Jarpchenko can't get a stick on it. Now they feed it into the corner. Jarpchenko center pass, and then the shot turned to just a little wide as the Soviets set it up well. Games are at six aside again. Maybe playing it to the right side. Tarchenko with a shot that's wider than that. Back along the boards. Foul Salkin with the line. Works it in toward the corner. Pick up the pace a little more. I don't think they're as high as they were at the outset now, Herb. They're taking the body. Pressuring the Kings who finally clear the zone. Los Angeles playing with Antonelli. Robinson. Of the other veterans. Sheen can't take the pass at center. It's going all the way back into the Los Angeles zone, but Doug Barnes on the ice and barely back to the That could make sorely out there. Ruchelinski moves up front. They bet he's down the left side. Come out of the ice along with Ellick. Ellick is leading the American Hockey League points right now. 17 goals, 23 assists, 40 points in 28 games at New Haven. Back Here's Oleski. This is Marty McSorley. McSorley across the line. Plays it in around the defense. Quickly backboard. It's Clay Metzhoff. Metzhoff trying to center it. And it's tangled up on the boards. Puck comes loose. Andre Quartalna failed to clear it out. Plays it around behind the net. There's back of it. Ruzelinski marked in front. They can't get the puck to him. Now he goes back to the net for it. Away from the Keaton. Put it out in front. There's going to be a hooking penalty. A hooking penalty being added out here. There is no score early in the first period. You're what? Alexi Yashkin in the penalty box. A hooking penalty. Had it out at the 837 mark. A lot of unfamiliar names, but Yashkin is a name we've heard, although this is not the player that... Was. I think one of the real hallmarks of the Russian game, the Soviet game, is their skating. We didn't see a lot of skating there. They're just reaching out, hooking and holding. Any coach will tell you you want to skate through your checks back there. And the Russians, the Soviets, I keep saying the Russians, Jacob, the Soviets, if, if, as Wayne Gretzky said, the thing that they have to do to be successful in the start is go to their legs, move by a high tempo game, because they're sure not going to win any physical confrontations. Bernie Nichols out on the face off with Robotai and Gretzky. Start deep in their own zone. Fraser set it up back of the net. Now he moves up the left side. Steve Duchesne carries the puck to center. Robotai tips it across the line, but immediately it's cleared out of there by Lesbikin. This is Gretzky. Second 
power play of the game for the Kings. They send Duchesne over the line. He's taken into the boards by Bashbeacon. Igor Bashbeacon, 23-year-old. Kings starting from deep in their own zone. Kreisler brings it out to center ice. Over the Soviet blue line, Nichols reached for it. Kreisler knocked it away from him. It goes all the way around to Gretzky. But the center one, that's clear to side. Duchesne with it at the point. In along the boards intended for Gretzky, but the Zalkin broke up the play. Move him to the Los Angeles zone. Nico can't control the puck, and this is Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky over the line. He's just on that one, didn't he? Now puts it in the slot, and Nichols shot is blocked. Good save by Cherbika. Only six seconds remaining in the LA power play. Nichols over the line. Cut it to Robitaille. Shoots. And again, Cherbika playing the angles well. Yes, he is usually those. Look at this. Nichols testing him off the glove hand. Cherbikov comes up with a big save for this Himmick team. 28 seconds remaining in the Los Angeles power play. Benning pitching in off the point. Got it to Nichols. Back to Benning. Look at the blue line. Went in deeper instead with the pass to Robitaille. Left it for Gretzky. They have two kings back behind that goal. Now Robitaille leaves himself from the tight checking of ball game. Puts it out in front. Back to Bernie Nichols. Nichols holding it, feeds Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky with time running out, it's poke checked off his stick. Well, Jason, I was going to say about the Russian goalkeeper, usually sort of their Achilles seal. Some of the floppers, they're not really in sync, they don't really play a stand-up game, but we've seen a couple big saves here by this Soviet goalkeeper. Alexei Cherveka, yeah, he has made a couple of outstanding saves. Nine minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the opening period here. Wayne Gretzky, topic of discussion. This young team, they are young. 29 is uh, the oldest player that they brought on the trip. They were looking forward to playing against them. They really made them think about this. Well, Wayne Gretzky, that's one thing they're going to find out before tonight's over. You don't do any stick checking against Wayne Gretzky. Because he's going to give it to you and take it away. And he's, this is this is going to find out where he's just but so well behind that goal line. He's waiting for people to get in those little seams and holes. Herschel Niski with a shot off the left side as Alec cut through in front to screen him. And we'll get a face-off in the Himmy getting set for a face-off in the Soviet end of the ice. No score, nine minutes remaining in the first period. Barry back out of defense for Los Angeles. Chased back into his own zone as his Himmy team moves up quickly. I think he hit the skating legs. He arrived here on Friday and have really enjoyed a warm weekend. Hey, warm Jesus, hospitality. Jesus. You don't think we've enjoyed it? <laughs> Speak for you yourself. Don't, Herb, you're living here, aren't you? <laughs> Permanently, you yeah. don't have to be from the Soviet Union not to enjoy Southern California. Temperatures in the 80s yesterday, high 70s today, sunny, almost spotless in the basin out here. You can even see the bottom of the pool today, Jake. <laughs> That's where you work. <laughs> I tell you. Doing my homework. Uh-huh. Beck playing the puck up the right side. That's Makula going rink wide to Krusilniski and his pass through the center ice area is broken up. Yashkin putting it back in for the Soviets. Brought out by Benning. Benning over center ice. Across the blue line as he cuts to the right. But Miller got in ahead of the play and it's offside. Jay Miller had that big goal against the Rangers on Saturday. He'll be talking with us on our second intermission tonight. Jay also shaved that beard off. I think he's waiting for his wife Paula to get birth to that baby any day back there, and I don't think he wants to go back to Boston with that full beard. He's getting prepared for that big day. But he was pretty happy the other night in that, that first goal, but he'll be a lot more happy when his wife delivers and he could think, say, gee, that's over, because it's bothering his play right now, and he's constantly worried about it. Talk to him again today. He's always worried about what's going on back home. Asper, Crowder, and Miller, back home guys, on all three former Boston Bruins. Hanging at the puck, Waters pinching it off the right point. Get it to the man who was all alone in the corner. Now they come back, and Miller plays it in. And it holds it here on the left side. Got it to Jay Miller. Miller bumping a little bit. He and Rack Rack Rackman Something like that. <laughs> and the he player that they sprung on is Rackman Rack What is it again? Rackman now, now that's the only thing I'm going to help you out with tonight, Jason. Now you're on your own. 
There he is, number nine. He stuck this guy in on it. Here we studied all day long. Well, not all day long. Cool, quite a bit. We had all the names down. What happened? What? Invariably, the Soviets are going to change a few sweaters on you, add a few players on you, right? So when we start looking around, who is this guy? And all of a sudden, 10 is 22, and 10 is uh, 22 is scratched, and this guy is that. And oh, you know, <laughs> but that's his name. You say they right, always do this? this? Yeah, they always do. Did they do that? You know that. At Lake Placid? Well, Did they food you there in many forms? Yeah, a lot of times they food you. That, that is an amazing what you can accomplish when you don't know what you're doing. Two favorite names around the hallways downstairs, dressing room area tonight. Gretzky, Brooks, Brooks. Oh, yeah, Brooks. Very good. Now what do I have to? And the Soviets take the lead. Loose puck bouncing around in front, and it's banged in by Val Gilman. Well, you described that very well, Jakes, because it was a loose puck. There was not a, they just jumped on that thing. They play, the Soviets will play a very conservative type of a checking game in the offensive zone. They've always got one guy high in the slot. The other two guys like to work those corners and like to throw it behind. Now, Goslin just ventured out a little bit. When you go that far out, you better control that puck or do something. And all of a sudden, he was just got a stick tied up there in Fraser's uh, razor skates. The Soviet just jumped into it. Loose puck, bouncing puck. Goslin stay home or get the puck. He can't get caught in between. And that's just what happened. Your Yeoman is another one that is not in the lineup in the traveling squad that showed up to play the game. Number 22, Val, your Yeoman. And he has given this Kimmick team a one to nothing lead. Shane playing the puck in. Big out, better than that. Uh, line, and there's that long drive blocked. Uh, the defense is playing around the boards here. Fraser. Back in with Lindholm. There's Robitaille over on right wing now. Luke Robitaille turns the puck over and Hibbick comes to center ice. He knows. He got the puck on the stick of your Yeoman again. And now they make a change. Playing it in. Robitaille went in after it. Couldn't get there in time. And out comes Bazalgan. Bazalgan across the line. Put it in the skates of his teammate. Turning around on the play is little poke and he's put it wide of the net. Harry Beck to Todd Alec. Alec wearing number six. Plays it through the center ice zone. We have exactly six minutes to go in the first period. Generally about the puck. The Soviets will be a little bit more aggressive than showing tonight. They're more of a counter-punching team right now, Jigs. They just put two guys. It's like a 2-1-2 two, two, uh, configuration. The third guy is always high, looking in the slot. Maybe move over to the boards a little bit. Allowing the defenseman to pinch in. You fill in for the defenseman. And generally, the two wingers are working as four checkers. But, but they are not really you know, very boisterous about it. Marty McSorley dumps the puck in. Back to the Soviets. Nikitin picks it up and ices it. A little whistle and a face-off back in the Soviet zone. They lead one to nothing as we pause now for a regional break. You're watching the National Hockey League on Sports Channel America. He's unstoppable. If I get the ball. You have mercy of whatever I want to do. Come fly with me. The ultimate video on the most exciting athlete in the world today. Every sports fan will want to own the hottest of sports videos. Michael Jordan, come fly with me. Witness his aerial onslaught as he takes on the rest of the NBA. To get your copy of Come Fly With Me, call 1-800-453-7300 for Come Fly With Me. Good crowd on hand here at the Forum. Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. This was part of the season ticket package. And I'm going to guess that they've got uh, close to 15,000 in here tonight. Watch the first game of the Super Series between the NHL teams and four touring USSR teams. Leading, leading one to nothing. The goal, Der Gilman, scoring from Galkin and Trukano at 12.49. We've had three penalties. Kings have had two power play opportunities. Trail by a score of one to nothing. Jay Miller out again with Crowder and Casper for Los Angeles. The Soviets play that long pass into center ice. And he's taken down. There'll be a penalty against Benning. Soviet center. Benning gets control of it. And now Hibbick will get their second power play opportunity of the game. They lead one to nothing and are headed for the power play. You're watching the Soviets and the Kings. 
Look at the penalty call here against Los Angeles, Herb. One of the things that Sovis will try to do is bring a guy out of their defensive zone, that long rink-wide pass, and they put a lot of pressure on the other team's defenseman. Brian Benning just got caught flat-footed up there at that offensive blue line, recovered. This guy can skate. Didn't quite fit into St. Louis' style of play, but he'll fit in here in L.A. Good skills. As Angeles continuing to look for pieces to their puzzle. Acquisition of Benning, recent acquisition of Makala. Still giving up a lot of goals in NHL play. That folks thought would be corrected this year with the arrival of Robinson, the return of Beck. Some strong checking forwards, but they still give up a lot of goals against. I think Jigs here looking for a couple of younger defense and a little more mobility. That's why they picked up Benning. That's not to say that. Back in that zone again. You saw that slap shot. Street car. Man down the cheeks. He didn't get good wood. If he had a good wood, he would have buried that. And itself a little unusual. The slap shot. Two people really go more for the wrist shot. You saw the slapper again off right wing. Hold it in at the blue line. And then this play the puck. Erdoff was coming in quickly. The captain of the team. A little out of position as it turned out. Be the blue. All game. Now comes right back to the blue line. Hard shot by Jacob Bienco. By the Los Angeles Kings. 51 seconds remaining in Benning's holding penalty. The team setting up at its own end of the ice. Three and a half minutes to go in the period as they come across the line. The woman here on the right side. He's the only goal scorer in this part. Put it back in the head. He got hit pretty good by Beck. And sorely battling for it. Moves it up along the boards. It's all going to it in. Then his pass was blocked. And out comes Nick Sorley. Tom Casper coming down the right side. Casper turning on Van Zalgen. And they're coming in to help him. Now Casper with it again, and it's knocked away. You know, sir, the Soviet defenseman chase, what they do in, in, in the bigger ranks in Europe, they won't turn and pivot and try to catch a guy there. They'll go to, go to a spot and make you come back to him, like spot bowling, so to speak. And, and in the National Hockey League, with the ranks a little narrow, you'll, the defense will pivot, try to get the guy, and take him into the boards. Well, the Kings have dumped it down the ice here. Teams were back at six aside. Yeah, the difference is the adjustments. It'll be interesting to watch this team when they get uh, into the third, fourth, fifth game of this uh, tour, playing on the smaller ice surfaces here. They had a very spirited practice this morning. I know you were taken with it. Deflected right in front, scooped up and held by Gosselin. The Hemic team of the Soviet Union lead. See the Soviet goaltender stretching out there. He's faced 11 shots. And a look at Gosselin as he prepared for the shot. But now the Kings are over the Hemic blue line. Robitaille got knocked off balance. Down on the deck and Benning. Out at center ice has moved the puck to water. Back to Brian Benning. Now to Robitaille. Pass to Makala. Stepped over the line. Made the play. And there's Nichols with a shot. Well shot on goal for the Kings. All handled by Rebecca. Two on one developing here for the Soviets. They move in deep. And a man parked out in front. Didn't give the puck to him. Robitaille moves it up. Benning's pass to Nichols. Went to the right for Makala. Back to Nichols. And he hadn't gone to the front of the goal. Now Nichols steps out of the corner. Benny Nichols holding the puck. Slipped it back to Benning. And his shot is blocked. Comes up in the center right zone. Back goes Nichols with just a little less than two minutes to go in the opening period. And the Kings offside as they tried to move into the Soviet end of the ice. Robitaille and now Bernie Nichols. A lot of people wondering whether he'd be able to pick up where he left off last year, and he's still putting the puck in the net. He had a career year last year, and we talked about it, and we talked about all the stories in the National Hockey League last year. Gretzky, the dude is here in L.A., the great year Lemieux had, of course, Eisenman. But for me, the story was Bernie Nichols. Jake's, yes, as you know, he's picked it up, and he's continued on. He's just, he's getting better all the time. He's doing more things. He's seeing the ice more. He's moving the puck more. He uses his people more. And he's still got that great ability to score goals, and he can turn the puck loose. Soviets now moving in across the line. Zalapukum with the pass, and it's deflected in. The Soviets go up 2 to nothing. Goal at 17.35. A tip in, and McSorley talks to referee McCreary while the Soviets celebrate. And that goaltender, Goslin, wondering. His team backed in a little on him, and then the deflection makes it 2-zip. Well, again, people go to the net, that little drop pass that the Soviets like to use all the time, and they'll move the puck. And you know what? They, we talked about the contrast and the similarities. They shoot the puck a little bit more through screens. A few years ago, they had tried to set up and get that perfect shot. That thing was just thrown a net, and it went off either McSorley 
or the Soviet player as he went to the net. And it's always important to go to the net. Those are the breaks you get when you go to the net. Those are the breaks you get when you create some traffic in front of that goalkeeper. Goslin had no chance on that. He couldn't find the puck. And the puck had eyes. Waiting the announcement on the goal scoring. Soviets lose the puck at the blue line, and here's Casper. Miller went to the front of the net. Casper couldn't find him. Valiant for the Soviets. Hit in his own zone, but is able to move the puck down ice. And back to the play, a whistle, and there's going to be a roughing penalty. Jay Miller being chased to the penalty box by referee Bill McCreary. Valiant getting up slowly. You saw him in your picture, and here's the reason he's hurting a little bit. Jay Miller's got him right in his signs there, and he just took him heavily into the boards. I don't know. Uh, it wasn't the hit so much it was, Jig. Just a nice little left cross. He was reading about the Duran fight all the time. Getting ready for that fight in a few days. But he gave him a little shot. Who do you like in that fight? More like Jay Miller. <laughs> Sugar Ray or uh, Roberto Duran? Ah, Sugar Ray. You gotta love Sugar Ray. I didn't care for Duran after. He says, no mas. Or something like that. was, it was and they're doing it again. <laughs> Zella Bukin, 1835, was the goal scorer for the Soviets to make it 2 to nothing. So you're Gilman and then Zella Pukin. Los Angeles trailing by a score of 2 nothing on home ice. They beat the Soviet team here. The Red Army beat the Kings 5-2 in 1986. Last year, Dinamo Riga won 5-3. Which is on Sports Channel. Soviet player taken down. Blue line, the play allowed to continue. We watch this power play being set up now by Hennig. He tries to do it. He's almost thinking he's a little political overtones the way he threw that guy down. That's not his style of play. And home, moving it to the far side, but not out of his zone. It's held in by the Soviets. Hogan got it back to the blue line. After the Yanko playing it to the far side, then right back to Yakov Yanko. Ball game. Hogan held it at the line and then that shot. Headed for the top corner is gloved by goalkeeper Mario Goslin and held long enough for a face-off. 13 seconds remaining in the period. The Soviets always like to get somebody inside that box, you know, on a power play situation. That one makes that point shot a little bit more dangerous. That situation, everybody's down the outer perimeter. And again, the defense was shooting that puck. Goslin had no trouble picking that thing up. You look at Peter Prazer there. We're talking about a little political overtone in his play. Again, you got to remember now, he's... Czechoslovakia, a young hopeful that's got some great skills, can really shoot a puck. And Tommy Webster's been using him as sort of the seventh defenseman. They're trying to bring him along slow, and I think if he's a little more physical like that, he might feel a little more ice time here in L.A. Think back to the deciding game in that series with Calgary last year. He got himself into the lineup. That's the last game for the Kings, and this is the end of the opening period. Los Angeles will still be shorthanded when the second period begins. Well, what do you think of the Soviets and the foul that they brought with them tonight, Herb? Well, Jake, they, I think they're very tentative. A couple goals they got were breaks, a bouncing puck in front, and that deflection front, and that their, their play, their tempo, their speed didn't really uh, impress me. I think they're just a little tentative. They're playing a counter-punching thing. I expected just a little bit more. And for L.A., of course, you know, just another night at the office, and it's for the cause, but... But uh, I think they're just going to come back with a lot of pride here. Well, it is two to nothing as you see the team in the lead. Hibbick, get it toward the dressing room as we pause now. 841-0300. Well, you see the Kings on the way from their dressing room here at the Great Western Forum in Inglewood, California. They are trailing by a score of two to nothing. And as I said earlier, they have never really had that much success on home ice against the touring Soviet team. And Hibbick was leading their division 23 3 and 4 with 50 points they had a 14 game winning streak red army and uh, dynamo of moscow are running second and third in that soviet elite league right now but jinx as you pointed out this is a young hockey club here at uh, kimmick five players only five players have had any national team experience and a couple of them the celiana and s10 and the journey at 45. Other than that, it's the other three have just spread them around a little bit. Most of their players, 11 of them, have played in various World Junior Championships. So this is a young hockey club. And uh, maybe their, their youthfulness is just added to their, I, I don't know, it seems that they're a little intimidated. Maybe they're in awe. And maybe that's a better word. And I really expect their, their, uh, the tempo of the game to pick up. The one thing that I've noticed about this team 
and the Central Red Army team from last year and the, the Olympic team of 88 as well, is, is these youngsters are more outgoing. And uh, talking with the young lady who is uh, working as a translator with them, who was with Red Army last year, she has uh, said exactly the same thing. These young men are, are saying good morning. How are you? You always find those young ladies someplace in the crowd, well, don't you? That, it was a tough assignment, <laughs> but yeah, the, the interpreter. No, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we had to talk about it, and she said that these, these people, there was a little more tenseness with the Central Red Army team last year, people like uh, the Tisov and so on. Well, I think that's really coming from the coast, you know, ticking off with just the, what do they call them, the Stalin of uh, uh, yeah. uh, Russian hockey, or Soviet hockey. Uh, but, it, but I've heard the same thing said, that they are a little bit more outgoing. And it's just the, the whole culture behind the curtain. And we can see the dramatic political changes going on right now. So people are expressing themselves a little bit more. And you'll see their expressions a little bit more on the ice. But as I said, I expected more than I saw that first period. And that you're looking and turning and looking right into our Sports Channel camera now is the head coach. That's Vladimir Vasiliev. They say that he rules with an iron hand, an iron fist. Not like Tikhonov. He does it differently, apparently, but he is ever the taskmaster with this team. There are 16 teams in the Soviet League, and we're seeing the division leaders here tonight. Breaking their season, they take five weeks off. They have a power play. He's off over center ice, has dumped it in for the Los Angeles zone. And the Kings, trying to club the boards with it, was Scott Bukestad. Line without a long shot. Oslin dropping down to make the save. Salapukin right in front, pokes away at it. That's knocked away from him. Salapukin left it on the boards, and Jimmy Waters clears the zone. Vita moves it to the left side, and the Soviets will not hold the pass. 17 seconds for Jimmy Miller dropping down. Look at the power play set up. The puck jumps over the stick of Smirnov and comes out to center ice. Smirnov, the captain playing on the right point. This is Tita, number 13, across the blue line. Played it to the left side. Jenko. Uh, back to the point. And the shot went wide. Means it takes his side again. Jukes that up with the puck. Jukes that to Wayne Gretzky. Jay Miller. Miller. He turned around. Cuts in and he is beaten by the goalkeeper. Dives out and covers the puck now. And the Echo making sure that he goes no further. Played a minute and 16 seconds of the second period. It's early when the Soviets had the puck in their offensive zone. This little passage, you pick that up right in his feet. Just kicked the thing out like a soccer ball. There's Jay Miller making a nice nice move here. Driving to that, protecting that puck with his big body. Wayne Gretzky trying to get the replay play. But again, the Soviets have been picking up the, you know, the LA forwards quite well and they're and they're giving the, their goalkeeper a little bit more room to see the puck than the uh, Gosselin has seen. So Tom Webster had to be pleased as well seeing Jay Miller drive to the net like that. Well of all the big guys here they have in LA nobody more sort of he's just growing by the by the game. I can't I can't believe it. Use him up in especially team situations with the down of goal. You've never seen that but when he was in uh, Edmonton he had such a supporting cast that his role was not not that, but he's, as I said, he works hard at his game, and he's really, really come on. Sogan handling the puck, and it's turned over to center ice, and Kusilinski's pass is broken up and cleared out to center ice. Sogan moving up, can't get there in time, and here's McSorley. And McSorley, Wayne Gretzky over on the left wing. Red just turned it out towards center ice. Down to feed McElroy, the pass was blocked. Back across the blue line. That's one goal that was deflected off the defensive stick. Augie chasing it. Out of center, Tita makes the pass. Augie across the line, drops it back. Big drive. Bad save by Gosselin to come up, kick the left pad. So he heads back into their own zone. Swimming team leading the Los Angeles Kings two to nothing. Let's make it over center ice. Off the line, dropped it back. Turns out, shot blocked in front. Cleared into center ice. Miller moving over. It's Yashin into the boards. Dave Miller right with Yashin. Gretzky there as well. The puck goes to McSorley. But Gretzky right up across the line. Quickly, Himmick moves it up through center ice. Kino across the line. It's knocked off his stick. Razor coming back to make the play for the Kings. And here's Lindholm turning. Up to McSorley. McSorley's pass off Miller's skates. Miller gets knocked down. Lindholm into four check. He's starting to take the body a little more. 
Beacon with a long pass through center ice. That's Pacino chasing it into the Los Angeles zone. Bosley moves it around the board. Kings failed to pick it up, however. Pacino goes back to the net. Pacino peels off into the corners. They move it to the blue line. And out comes Mike Allison. Allison to Duchesne. It jumps off his stick. And now, hanging up the left side. On into the Los Angeles zone. Green has to cross in the second period. Duchesne with a pass. Miller at center ice. Can't hold it, however. And the Soviets wheel right over the line. They're starting to play with a lot of confidence. And here's an opportunity and a 3 to nothing lead. Cordova. Andre Cordova, the older of the two brothers, makes it 3 to nothing. Regis had it again. They're just playing a little more enthusiasm. LA's defensive core had just been lax. They're, you can see it. You can see the telltale sign when, when a team is not really into it for whatever reason. They've been a little lax coming off their, their line changes, and the Soviets have been taking advantage of this. They just found a little seam there, split it. The guys don't have no chance on that at all. And again, you're not going to see LA play like that in the National Hockey League. They're just going to be able to finish the interchecks a little bit, or there's going to be, you know, something to pay. And just joining us right now is the head coach of the Los Angeles team, Tommy Webster. Tommy Andre Cordova. Cordova. Andre is a 26 year old forward scoring in the 22 mark. And the Hemi team is leading by a score of 3 to nothing. Oslin out of the net leaves the puck there for Brian Benny. 16 minutes to go in the second period. Benning's pass went to the left side. Bernie Nichols moves it right back again. And right zone. The Kings unable to get organized. So this Hemic team with a three-zip lead moving out into the center ice zone. And Mishnah dumps one in. Jason did. Back to Thielen and he went to put one in front of the net. That's picked off by Bernie Nichols. Nichols had Robitaille moving to center ice. Couldn't get the puck to him. And Yashin with a long shot. Stick saved by Goslin. Robitaille here on the right wing. Waters with a cross ice pass to Benning. Miss Nichols with it in center ice. Yashin's pass. Broken up. Here's Nichols playing it back for his defenseman, Brian Benning. Butestat moving up the left side. Couldn't get the puck to him. And McKeon failed to clear the zone for the Soviets. This game does give uh, LA Kings a chance to look at some of the players that don't get a lot of ice time. Bringing up a couple guys from the New Haven Farm Club. Not passed by Zelopukin, but they couldn't finish the play. And Nichols comes down the left wing. Ian Krushelniski across the line. Three Soviets back to break up the play. Tom Webster has the microphone. He'll be joining us here during the second period as we watch his goalkeeper. Move it around to the right side. This is McSorley. Marty McSorley to center. Keaton chased it as he dumped the puck in, and the Kings are offside. The visiting team from Nimick up by a score of 3 to nothing, and we'll be right back. I certainly feel that we have to start picking up and start playing the way we're capable of playing. Tom, one thing you mentioned, though, there's a, a real tough loss Thursday night against Edmonton. You played a tremendous game Saturday. A lot of emotion in that game, and it's tough to get up for these exhibition games. And, yeah. and, and, and I think you go back to your career, and any National Hockey League player, professional player, they understand what's in the mind of the Los Angeles Kings. They feel there's a, a certain obligation to the pension fund, but to get up for this thing when it's 80 tough games, especially the division here in that smite division, there's never a night off. You've got the long, tough road through the playoffs. It's another game. And, uh, you know, you have some mixed feelings. You see your hockey club out there, Marty McSorley, playing with the typical Marty McSorley enthusiasm, yeah. regardless of who he plays. And then there's some other ones at, at, at different stages. So, you know, it's sort of be ex uh, expected. So, be yeah. nice to the guys. Will you? Get off them. I'm Jeez. glad you're a coach. Get off them. An ex-coach. <laughs> Remember, there's a lot of us ex-guys around here, especially New York guys. <laughs> I think I'm in the middle of something here. <laughs> but if they ever had a reunion, Jinx, they wouldn't find a hotel big enough. <laughs> What was talked about, uh, Tom, in, in preparation for this? I, I doubt that you had any videotape to work. Yeah, we did. Oh, you did? Uh, we showed a little bit of a clip before the game started. And, uh, it, uh, it, it helped in the sense that it helped the penalty kill. Put there. Go back to uh, Gets the Kings on the board. 6-0-8 of the second period. He's going to be a welcome addition to your hockey team, I think, Tom. Well, Jake, he will be. And I think this is a very big goal for him in the sense that he had been struggling scoring. This will be a confidence builder for him. And of course now, playing on the line with Gretzky and uh, Kruselinski will be a big plus for him. But he does things well. He handles the puck. Uh, and he scored a very big goal. Get us back in the hockey game. And 
Well, Tommy, you give Mackle a chance like that down deep, he's going to bury it. As you said, he's got the great hands, sees the ice very well. But, you know, trades, when they're good trades, they help both clubs. According to Jake's here, that uh, that's the two players just sent over to the island. Yeah. They've played well, very well there. So it's it's helped for both hockey clubs, I guess. Well, that's what trades are designed to do. So thinking, Tom, in the, the acquisition of Mackle, looking for that right winger on the rest of the line. Yes, it is. He has the skills, the speed, the strength, and the shot that once he starts to feeling comfortable with Wayne, you'll see that his production will increase at the same time. He opens things up for Wayne with his speed, and that's something that we've needed because he's been taking quite a, quite a few hits on his little move inside the blue line, but now people are going to have to start concentrating on that. Tom, that's a good point. He does have some good wheels. Soviet's moving in here. Bacon, number 10, out there. Bacon has an assist in tonight's game, setting up the first goal by your Yeoman at 12.49. Gonzalo Bacon scored late in the first period. And the team, Jimmy, got up by a 3 to nothing score before Matthew's goal at 6.08. Down. Team going back to the net, moved it up to right wing boards. Right back in again, and brought out by Shellyman. Off the left point. So he moves it around the boards. Jay Miller up there. The Doolin out again for the Soviets. There's going to be a penalty on the play. Penalty call is against the Hemi team. The Kings are going to go to the power play with a chance to get themselves right back into it. They're down by a score of three to one. Back in the forum in Inglewood, California, you see the Soviet player. In the penalty box, Rack McDoolin. Oh, oh, yeah, he gave Timmy Waters a good shot right there. If you look down at penalty minutes here with the Soviet players, you don't see too many penalty minutes over over their season, but that was no question about that. There's one thing that the uh, referees are calling a lot more this year, Tom, the high yeah. stick. Well, you have to be responsible for your stick. It's a message that's sent from last year. I think it's been good here. I think it balances out in the long run because the players understand that. What's the sense of carrying the stick up that high anyways? They're knocking down pucks and hitting people. Keep it down on the ice where you can score some goals. This is Ella Pukin moving in with a shot. Goslin the save. The Soviets have the power play. 30 seconds over. They're sticked off. Goes across the line. Gretzky sets up. This looks for a high and knocked out of the air by Cherveyakov. The Soviet goalkeeper. Duchesne on the right side. Steps over center ice. Put in out of the reach of Nichols. Nichols, Robitaille, and Gretzky, the forwards for Los Angeles. Raisler back on one side of the defense, Duchesne on the other. Just over a minute remaining in the man advantage. Robitaille dropped it right back to Peter Fraser. Steve Duchesne overshot it. It's enough to check immediately. The puck bounced away and cleared by the goalkeeper, Gosselin. Kovalnoff, Dmitry Kovalnoff is the man who had the opportunity. Dimitri is 23, and his older brother Andre is 26, and a two-line pass offside against the Soviets. Well, Herbie, we talked about a quick transition, and something that we're learning from the uh, European style of hockey. Especially on a power play, when a puck is dumped in, we're always looking for that quick counter. As a result, you can see a save here, and then Steve is looking quickly up ice to hit Gretzky, who's breaking in, and then you take advantage of the two Soviet players in deep. Well, we've seen you do that an awful lot this year. And, you know, that's that's the style of game you have to play against these people. You can make that quick transition, the game opens up. When you're a hockey club, if I may say this, it is professionally they can't, Tom, if you're not skating, you're in trouble. Uh, well, when you people are moving and moving the puck like that, making that transition from defense to offense and vice versa, you've got, you've got some size, you've got some big guys that can play that game, and obviously you've got some of the great forwards to do it. Well, we find that out within the division, boy. You've got to be skating. You've got to be moving the puck. You've got to go to the holes. Of course, the quicker you move the puck up ice, the quicker you're going to take advantage of any kind of turnovers. I think it's something you always said is win that race to the red line with a manpower advantage, and that was a classic case right there. That thing went from the defense zone to the red line awful fast. Cobb Webster is in our booth. He is the head coach of the Los Angeles Kings. That's being run tonight by his two assistant coaches. Tommy said he's taking one uh, one night off and he's turning his pay back to the club for this one. You had to buy some ties. <laughs> <laughs> you two got into something here Saturday night, huh? Well, Backhand shot and no further play is Alec, just up from New Haven of the American Hockey League, testing the Soviet goalkeeper. 
Hey, uh, uh, the thoughts, Tom, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how you decided who was going to get the night off besides Tom Webster. <laughs> I'm thinking of people like Taylor and uh, some others as we watch the replay here. Well, again, we're working the puck down low, which we felt we had to do in order to maybe take advantage of the goaltender staying so deep in the crease and then drawing everybody down. As a result, the first goal came from there and almost the second goal. But uh, bringing up a guy like uh, Alec and, and Houston was a result of uh, talking with the coach uh, in New Haven, asking them who he felt were the best players at this time deserved an opportunity to come up. And he highly recommended both of these guys. And of course, now coming into the uh, into the lineup, we just had to look at who needed the risk the most. And felt that uh, Josh Robinson, Canelli, and a guy like Dave Taylor will respond a little bit more to the rest uh, with the upcoming games that we have. I know you're familiar with the history here. Her pointed out earlier the injury to Bobby Carpenter last season. Tommy has turned the puck over here, but Lindholm unable to handle it. Now takes it out of the corner. Had Allison in front, couldn't get it on his stick. Jay Miller picks up the play, and the Soviets move it up through the center ice area. Good move there, and across the line with it again is Rakatulin. Rakatulin assisting on a goal to make it three to nothing, and then Macalow scored from Alec and Duchesne at the 6:08 mark. We talked about Bobby Carpenter breaking his hand here last year. We don't see Stephen Casper right now. I believe he's got an injured shoulder. Some of the words we got between periods. That's something he can't afford, especially the way Stevie's been playing and that real good checking line that's developing here in L.A. with Johnny Pinelli and, and Keith Crowder. Kings with one more home game, then a long road trip too, Tom. Uh, it's coming up for you. Drive off the glove hand of Gosselin and Robitaille clears it to the line, but not out. Long shot. That's a play, target. play, Herbie, that I've been trying in the last little while. You see Robitaille out of the zone. So that you're starting to press now, so I told the coach to leave a guy out of the neutral. Guy. Get him out of there. Maybe we can bring somebody to lose. So as a result, we almost had one right there. And the Soviets, the Senate team up three on two. They put the puck in the middle. The shot blocked by Gosselin. The rebound there. The Soviets able to get a stick on it. This is Tita. That is deep. Tried to put one in the goal mouth. Bernie Nichols. Nichols over the center ice area. In the Hemming zone holds the puck. Look toward Crowder and he couldn't handle the pass. Crowder up the slot all alone. Now the Hemming club moves up to center ice. The play broken up by the Kings defenseman Benny. Crowder with a pass of an off Robitaille stick. Plays it into the center ice area and it's recovered by Marty McSorley. Eight minutes remaining in the second period. Here's Luke Robitaille. Crowder to pass off his gate. Well, when LA's playing their style of game, you're not going to see, as I said earlier in the pregame, that there's more similarities time than there's contrast today in the, in the styles between the Soviets and, and the National Hockey League. Oh, there sure is, Herbert. You know, everybody's now, as we talked about earlier, in the transition game, getting uh, the defensemen more involved in the offense. Even a goaltender more involved. It's most I've seen their goaltender handle puck and try and move it. So you're getting, you're getting people that are always getting into the flow of the game. And transition, quick counter is the name of the game nowadays. And it brings out the best of the athletes. And there's some great athletes, obviously, in the National Hockey League. And I, I've always felt you've got to give them some leeway to bring their talents out and to suffocate them as, you know, you don't really do justice to them. Here's Kurt Oneski moving right in. His backhander is turned aside. Jeremy Akoff, another big save there 21 shots on goal now for Los Angeles they trail three to one Algae with the puck trying to move in around the defense but put a good move on Waters picks it out of the corner and a centering pass from behind the teammate plus three top and the center ice now Ellick across the Soviet blue line shoots one off the skates of the goalkeeper and bounced right up in front to Yushkin. Todd Ellick was acquired by LA in the trade for New York Rangers and he had a good year last year in the Ranger situation in Colorado and New Haven. And see that long shot and an offside, little pushing and shoving. With the score, Himmick 3, Los Angeles 1 will pause for a regional break. You're watching the Kings and Himmick live on Sports Channel America. We're at the birthplace of the world's largest fast food chain, where it's easy to see how being the best can make you the biggest. That's why Schomburg Toyota is the Midwest's largest volume Toyota dealer for the 11th year in a row. Proving they're the best by saving you the most on hundreds of new 1990 Toyotas in stock now. Like $1,500 cash back on new 1990 Toyota pickups and new Toyota 4Runners from only $13,872. 
at Schaumburg Toyota, 875 Golf Road, where bigger really is better. Discussion going on here. You see the officiating staff, all three, Hockey League, Bill McCreary, Brian Bozak, and Pierre Shampoo, and talking with Vasiliev, the coach. Well, we've had a couple of incidents already, Jigs, with, uh, with some high sticks being involved, and as a result, that's how Stevie Casper got hurt, but you can see here, again, a high stick coming down over the back, another high stick in front of the net, but Jay's doing a job that he's supposed to do well, and that's go to the front of the net and finish some checks. But uh, in the first period, the goaltender uh, should have picked up a penalty on, uh, on freezing the puck behind the goal line. It's another one that they missed. You had to look there a moment ago at Jay Miller in the discussion with the Soviet player after that set two in front of the net. Well, I think the Soviets were complaining because the guy got a cut lip or a nose. Opportunity set up here. Goslin comes up with a big save. It's him at three. The Los Angeles Kings won as we pause for a regional break. You're watching the Soviet series against the Los Lester Stallone, who is here in most of these games. Uh, didn't Russell and Stallone just finish up a movie, Tom? Were you involved? No, I wasn't, but I wish I could have had the Rocky music in between periods for, uh, for the guys to get them going. Well, they got one on the board and trying to fight the way back into this hockey game. First of a series of 21 games, four Soviet teams coming over here. And they completes their six games swing by the, four, the 14th of December, I believe it is. And the Soviet Wings arrive in North America to begin their series. The first game is December 26th against the New York Islanders. Red Army will be over as well. Speaking, handling the puck in the center ice zone. Something the Soviets will do here, Jigs, they'll regroup. They don't like what they see at the offensive line. They'll go back and start again. They won't do it as much as they used to. They start dumping the puck in, do a little more chasing, court checking now. That's something they've taken away from the North American game, and that's helped their game, actually. Yeah, I've just give you a little different style of game. That's true, Herbie. I've seen them probably dump the puck in more in the last little while than I have probably in the past few years. And since that, if they don't have the plays, instead of trying to regroup as much as they do, they do dump the puck in. Talk to us a little, Tom, if you will, about this young man, Todd well, Alec. Todd Alec has had a, an outstanding year through all of the uh, troubled times that they've had down in New Haven. He's been able to uh, take upon the leadership role, stay with it, to provide that hockey club with uh, uh, the offensive powers that they need to, to sustain contention in New Haven. And he's played extremely well, according to Marcel Como, and here he is tonight, and giving him an opportunity to do a little bit up here. 17 goals, 23 assists, number one scorer in the American Hockey League right now, playing at New Haven. Nico McElroy is the only goal for the Kings. He's the back of the net, and telling the wraparound, and it's blocked at the defense. Maybe given the center ice zone, McElroy took his man down, and there's going to be a penalty. Los Angeles will be a man short. They're trailing in this hockey game by a score of 3-1, to one, and we'll be back right after this message. McElroy in the penalty box, hooking called at 14.59 of the second period. Oh, we we talked about the exchange, the different styles of play, the more similarities and contrasts today, the Soviets. So they played 61 games since 1976, and there's been a lot of exchanges. And you'll see the Soviets now will use their body a little bit more. And, of course, you know, Mikko Makhla, you don't like to take that type of penalty in the neutral zone when there's a long way to go yet, but he's keeping his legs moving. But, again, with Makhla, I think the thing is, Tom, what you just mentioned here, he's involved. He's trying yeah. to do something. You can forgive we give some of those things like that, even though maybe it wasn't the best spot on the ice for it. Now that good wrist shot. Soviets with a man advantage here. Zetov puts it back of the net. Can't get it to the blue line. Allison got it to the left side. The puck cleared out into the center ice zone by Lindholm. Lindholm and Allison killing it off with McSorley and Beck. So Smirnoff, the captain of the Kinnick team, playing it into the center ice zone. Velopuka checking the blue line. Head bobbing and waving. Kings stand up, take the blue line away from them. First man back, Smirnov. I'd like to do a stretch that zone. You'll see a guy way at that offensive blue line just standing there trying to bring the defenseman back and open up a little gap. So again, it's that, that checker type of game. But Gretzky plays that all the time. And you'll find the L.A. people mirroring him in practice and throughout the game to use that full ice. The width and the depth of it is very important. And the Soviets do it very well. Soviets moving in here with the man at batting. Four minutes remaining in the second period. And the wraparound fails to work. Spruikov 
Maybe it's fun of the net. Now the Kings have cleared the zone. Tom Webster, your team here playing in this, this division where you've got people like uh, Makarov, Gutov, Larry Arnott playing regularly now. What do you think of the impact the Soviets have had in the league and especially in the division? Well, I, I think they're doing extremely well in the sense that they've come in, they're certainly making a big uh, cultural adjustment in, in the North American style of play, but I really feel that uh, eventually, uh, given the time that they've needed, that they will help improve the hockey league just simply by their talents. Uh, they, the hockey clubs have made some big investments in them simply because they are good quality players. And you're going to get that kind of player on the ice. It makes the other team a little more aware of, of the skill levels that they're going to be throwing at you. James, the number that we read coming out of Vancouver, correct me if I'm wrong, Kutov was the one they're talking about because he's in, in the doghouse a little bit for Bobby McCann, and he's struggling for whatever reason. We're not there, we don't know, so I, I got to qualify for that again, but he is, he is struggling. And there's a big investment, as Tom just mentioned, the investment to the extent was Kutov getting like $350,000, $400,000, and the same amounts have to go to the Russian Ice Hockey Federation. So, and those are, are, are yearly sums over three years, so uh, it, it, it is a big investment, it's a major undertaking, and there's going to be that, as Tom said, a cultural adjustment here, and, and uh, before you pass judgment after the first quarter, we'll see what happens after the last half, and I guess that's what, you know, the real proof will be. Teams at six aside again, three to one, Mimic leading Los Angeles. 18 Soviet players were drafted, the entry draft this past June. See the Soviets setting up in center ice. The forechecking job by Kusilniski here. And he's bothered as he moves in. Hooked from behind by Yashkin. Kusilniski hangs right with the puck. What a job he's done here. Nakula with him. The team comes up with it. Managed to clear it into center ice. Jason said 18 drafted last year, 11 and 88. And from 1975 through 1987, those 12 years, only uh, 17 were drafted. And here's a breakaway for the Hemic team. He can move in. Good stop. Two minutes, five seconds remaining. The crowd getting into it now. They haven't had a great deal to cheer about. Their team got down 2 to nothing in the first period. Trailed 3 to nothing before Bacala scored. And now the Kings have just iced it and are trying to get back on this 3-1 to one deficit. You hear what happened on that breakaway, what set it up? Well, Brian Benning, he's got to, he's got to use those legs, and Tom Webster wants his defenseman at ball, but someone's got to fill in that situation, and nobody filled for him. And that was a great save by Goss, and you notice he was out, came back, he made a great pad save, so again, when a defense was on the rush, you're playing a little give and go, one of the forwards have to read that thing and fill in, and the defenseman, again, if it's heavy traffic there, maybe better bury it. Mirnov just drilled one off the left point. That's 27 shots on goal now for the visitors. Hemmick. Larry Beck moves the puck to the left side. Out at center ice. Sorley. Connor. Jay Miller. It's into the corner. Miller feeds the blue line for Beck. Knocks it in a little deeper. There's Clatter. Cunningham right on him and they... But a play stoppage here with a minute and 24 seconds remaining. Jay Miller turned, said something to the, the Soviet counterpart, but the penalty appears to be against Crowder. Well, it's tough to play catch up against the Russians in the, in the penalty box. And you know, you look at the time, the last minute and a half, get a penalty like that, and all of a sudden they score, and it's going to make a tough game, you know, even tougher. Crowder a little frustrated there, just reached up, got his fist in his face, and Willie McCray right on it. And again, it's the timing of the thing, Tom, and that's something you talk about. Pick your spots if you're going to get something like that, not at the start, not at the finish of the period. Well, that's one thing that uh, Keith Crowder does well is goes in and grinds out. And as a result, he takes those kind of penalties, those hard-working penalties. But unfortunately, the time is, is of importance. We're, we're back into the hockey game with, with un, under two minutes, and it's important that we stay on the ice to try and take advantage of, of the odd offensive chance. Not only the minor penalty, he gets a 10-minute misconduct along with it. One minute, 24 seconds remaining in the second period. Jay Miller is leaving the ice. You look at T-Top. A guy like uh, Keith Crowder, though, is one of the players that I really enjoy coaching. You know those kind that come to work every day, day in and day out, and practice in a hockey game. He gives you everything that you want. 
And he's the kind of guy that lifts your hockey club when, when you're into those dull times. So a guy like Canelli and, and Casper that you alluded to are those hard-working lines that pick up your whole club. The time you had a little slump there, and it was, it was sort of tied in with Pete Crowder's injury, and he wasn't back. As soon as he got back in the lineup, you found your that, that lineup that you want to start picking up. Now, Pete doesn't score this year, but he's doing all the other things that, that you've described. And there was a real noticeable difference when he was out of the in, out of the lineup with that injury. Yeah, absolutely, Herbie. You know, he, he gave us that life, and then Mike Krusenowski also coming back into the lineup. It seemed to give us that balance that we needed with the three lines, that little chemistry that they needed together to start making things happen offensively. Well, the Ets with a minute and 14 seconds left in the power play. 35 seconds, all that's remaining in period number two. Teams have shared goals on each side. They make leading by a score of three to one. Los Angeles Kings move out with a pass that jumped over Robitaille stick. Rubiakov out of the net, cleared it, and Ross Nichols disappeared from the Himmick goal mount. They can score shorthand, and they've done it quite well this year. They've done it last year. They got the players that can do it. Robitaille almost had that semi breakaway there, and the guy that was out of sight, you know, if Robitaille would have had it. Bernie Nichols is all alone going home. Now each team with a goal. That's the end of the second period. Tom Webster, the, the coach of the Los Angeles Kings, joining us. Your thoughts now? With down three to one, they're certainly not out of it, but. Uh, the home crowd not too pleased with what they've seen either. Well, it, it seemed like, again, Jigs, uh, once they went up 3 nothing, and we got ourselves a little uh, mad and upset, and we started uh, taking the play to them, and as a result, Mack was scoring a goal seemed to give us more life. We had some opportunities simply by driving to the net. We've got to do that. We've got to maybe not try to look for that cute play that we want. We've just got to try and get some pucks on that, see if we can get one of those good lucky bounces that'll go in on that at the same time. It'll start generating something for us up there. Well, I saw the Soviets score in the first two periods. The third two goes in the first period, that bouncing puck and the deflection. Now we know you want to get downstairs and talk with your team. Tom, thanks for joining us. Good luck to your club, and uh, we look forward to a lot, of, a lot of action with the Kings on Sports Channel over the balance of the season. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Ray. We're going to pause now for a regional break. Western Forum getting ready for the third period. Like a football huddle behind that gimmick goal. And now over at the penalty box, Keith Crowder picked up a roughing penalty and then a 10-minute misconduct penalty. Jay Miller serving the minor penalty, and Crowder will be there for all but a half of a uh, third period. Jake, so it's good to uh, have Tom Webster up here between, you know, during the second period, some of his thoughts and observations. He's a little frustrated up here. I think the coaches at time like to get up and see the things evolve from a little different perspective behind the bench but when you're up here you also you're not involved too much either and it's an awful frustrating thing when you're working with that club day in and day out yeah you don't like to see uh, bad things begin to develop bad habits I guess is what I'm saying because they have a tendency to, to carry through but you know coaches rely on that uh, and the video tape so much jigs and the viewpoint from the bench is not really conducive to seeing things unfold uh, I mean, if you look at what they do in football and how they use upstairs in the spotters and the assistant coaches, uh, it's just good to get away from the bench and take a, a little different look. Mike Allison leveled his man. He's slow to get up. That's Detoff just now recovering his victim. The Soviets, El Tukin, drops the puck back into his own zone. Here off with it at center. Expected Yakov to be out tonight to see what I'm sure is a relative play in this game. Jigs had the Soviet came off holding his hand. He got really hit, but that teed off. And Mike Allison came off right away also. And he got his bell run. In that situation, that was, a, that was a major collision in that thing. And that's a good way to start the second period for Los Angeles because they've got to get involved. There's nothing like getting involved sometimes. It's just a big hit. And all of a sudden, the Soviet player, you better look up in this league. You start reaching for a puck, and you're going to get hit. And he got it. And his shoulder went down. He could possibly get a separation or there, whatever. Petoff is a 24-year-old center iceman. That is one of their top center icemen. They can ill afford to lose him. They make leading by a score of three to one. Up jumped in. Back forward is Steve Duchesne. Duchesne pulled away from Klaus Petoff. Moves it up the left wing boards and center ice. And reaches Robitaille. Now Fraser turns it over. Soviets failed to penetrate at the Los Angeles blue line. Fraser had trouble with the puck. 
The pass here, quick shot for Skate Save by Goslin. Then the rebound comes through in front of us, cleared by the defenseman Duchesne. Set it up at the blue line. The pass going to Malgin. Malgin trying to go back in the net. Brasler knocks him down. Play allowed to continue. Robitaille with it now. Plays it through Duchesne and off the left wing boards and set right. King pick up a loose puck. Robitaille comes over the line. It's poke checked away neatly. Soviets dump it down into the Los Angeles end. Goslin giving it to Waters. He tries the left side. Quickly the four checking pays off. He's entered one, but nobody there for the Soviets. Standing up the middle to Robitaille. Now Nichols. Nichols look toward Robitaille. Cruise to right wing. Shot one high and wide of the net. Bouncing back to Tim Waters. Luke Robitaille. Robitaille's pass is blocked and then cleared out of the zone by Balgun. Waters with help from Benning. He's able to clear it. Right back into their zone. Waters with it now. Center ice. Lusilisky. Check. Robitaille comes up to steal the puck. Plays it into the big zone. Quickly, it's moved right back out again. It's 45 seconds into the third period. Icing waved off. Maybe in the middle of the player change. Everybody leaves at once. The Kings unable to make the transition cleanly at center ice. Through to L.A. tonight, they've had a couple of ships there, and they weren't too, weren't too fast at Jigs, it almost cost him, and that was another one there, but both teams didn't have anybody on the ice. I'd like to say we're going to change, make sure that someone's out there, just a little safety valve, then he can sneak up at the right time. Another hit in center. This time it's McSorley going down. Eddie McSorley got the full force of the check. Adar, back at the toilet. Something like that. How did you pronounce it earlier, Herb? Just like you, Jigs. <laughs> Rack of a duel in, that's how I said it. But anyway, Marty got his bell rug. Did he ever? Sorley takes his man in heavily. You know, a guy like Marty, you know, some people all of a sudden the Soviets come over or the or the Europeans come over and other people start running. But Marty McSorley runs anybody, so you know, if he's going to hit somebody, he'll hit it if you're in the National Hockey League or Soviet or Reed or Kenner, whatever. It makes no difference to him. Work there. Now Jay Miller moves the puck to Makula. A moment ago, Makula had an opportunity cutting it off left wing. Pretty good to see her jigs in the last uh, maybe 15 minutes of this game. Alephukin with the puck past the line. And those wraparound passes. Right up here. Tempo on the center one. And Allison moves it out to Los Angeles. Gretzky with a towel around his neck. He hasn't had a shift in the third period as Ella Pippen now tries to move in. Not the pass to Gosselin, but he gives it to Lindholm. Check back in the net. Duchesne turns it over. And shot on the point with off the stick. And up into the seats. Kings continue to trail 3-1. to one. We'll be back in just a moment. Big West champ Fresno State. Aaron Craver chews up yardage on the ground as the Bulldogs aim for their second straight bowl title. Mac Champ Ball State. David Riley's passes sliced through the air with deadly accuracy. Fresno State versus Ball State in the California Bowl. Live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on Sports Channel America, Saturday. The Fighting Irish take their act on the road for a battle with the Marquette Warriors. Notre Dame basketball. Live at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Sports Channel America, Saturday. Martin McSorley, he likes to like the puck. As I said, his game is growing all the time, and he's handling the puck right here. He's just trying to fight off a little check. And Rack Fieldson stepped in and really drilled Marty. And all of a sudden, this is kind of funny thing here. I don't know how Lindholm just said, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> That, I don't know how old his coach right that one. It's a low fresh that he was there. <laughs> I wish you had a mic on him when he was doing that. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. That's a little difference between a Soviet player and a Swedish player, I guess. Keep in mind it is an exhibition game as these four Soviet teams come to visit. All 21 National Hockey League teams playing game against the Soviets this year. It's that trying to cut in. Wrapped up at the defense. I should also uh, point out that uh, Wayne Gretzky's not seeing any ice time right now. He's just going to play in the power play and maybe kill the odd penalty. And he gets so much ice during the regular season that it just, uh, these are the nights where he's got to rest a little bit. It's that down at the blue line. James forced back into the road. 
that little ripped away from him. He's able to recover. Makes the man, and Bukestad takes the puck. Comes it in off the board. So it's opportunity being set up by Robitaille, but he couldn't get the nickels in time. Over the center ice. Aiken with a shot. They score! Aiken dropping it back. And the Soviets make it 4-1. to one. The goal coming at the 5.47 mark. There's a pattern Russians play. They like to drop pass. They like to shoot off a pass. And boy, that was the case in point. If you notice on this drop pass, he didn't pass the puck. That puck just stops. He just dropped, dropped it. He got a little help there, of course, also. When the L.A. defense went, Duchesne maybe touched it and helped him drill that thing. That was a big league shot, obviously. Rash Meekin just one time that thing, and Goslin didn't see that thing at all. He got screened by the Russian forward, Soviet forward, going towards the net a little bit. High to the short side. Well, goalies like to get out and cut the angles. Much as possible for that bucket eyes. Dmitry Kortlov gets the, the goal. Rashmikin had an amazing drop pass. Rashmikin, 28 years of age now. That was a time about five years ago that Rashmikin was considered to be the top prospect, the top young prospect in Soviet hockey. He started his career with the Central Red Army team. He had a bounce with the bottom drinking problem. And Dmitry uh, didn't take kindly to him. Sat out most of last year. He was transferred to the Civic team. The coach, Vladimir Vasiliev, his lifestyle turned around and got a pretty good hockey player out of it. The Soviets come to center right, leading four to one. Matula moving it off the right side, his shot turned aside. Back got to him. Sorely got to the puck, checked on the play. And the Kings. by Goslin. Big team all over the Kings. Not Los Angeles zone right now. A less than 15 minutes to play. And Benning takes it back in the net. And Benning will pass on to the stick of Lindholm. He's across the blue line with Bacala. Pass to Bacala to Lindholm. He shoots. Big save. And the air drop coming up to the big save again. Lindholm puts it out of the corner. It's Brad tied up by the play. side of the net to the drive went wide as Miller came right up the slot for the Kings. Miller gets tripped up. Play allowed to continue. Lindholm had it and lost it. And his gimmick team is content to clear the zone. Icing waved off. Both teams in the middle of player changes. 12 minutes to go in the third period. Gimmick leading 4-1 as Bukestad takes the pass. Steps over the line. Drills one right on. Aikon making sure there is no rebound. The goal at the 5.47 mark. Both brothers, Andre scoring in the second period. Now Dimitri here in the third. This one, a, a goal by Dimitri. He's regarded as the up-and-coming star of this team. He's closest to uh, the star status of this club. Jigs, he had a great year last year. Ninth overall in the Soviet National Hockey League in scoring. 32 points won by Makarov. One of the 54 points, of course, we know what he's doing in Calgary right now. An opportunity to see this young man uh, last spring when he watched the World Championship in his first appearance. Robitaille to Nichols. He had to turn back as Bukestad was ahead of him with the blue line. Nichols leads it to the left side. Fraser gets to the puck. Give it back to Bernie Nichols. Boards, nothing doing there. Got a poke in the center ice. It's up with Fraser. Robitaille took the man, and out of the net is Goslin. He gets checked. Goslin comes back, going a fist into the face of the Soviet player. And we're going to have uh, maybe two penalties called here. And then it's at 54 seconds remaining in the third period as we pause now for a regional break. You're watching the Soviets and the Kings.
Six penalties in the game against Los Angeles, and this one is going against the goalkeeper, Mario Gosla. Yeah, Mario a little frustrated, trying to stop the puck behind him. And he felt he was taken in there somewhat, and he tried to give a thing going. He just gave him a good elbow right there. It is an un unnecessary call by a move by Mario. It's tough enough to play goal in the National Hockey League or any other league without you know, venting it like that. You're going to get your penalties at time, no question. But right now, I think there's a little frustration setting up for Los Angeles. That can't go right back in the net, and Goslin met him there. So, Nick with a man advantage, leading by a score of four to one. Plus, Kukov in front of the net, nobody paying any attention to him. And then the LA Kings able to clear the puck down the ice. In deep. He comes in to join the play, much like Fatisov used to do with Central Red Army. I think the Russians here have seen the likes of Barry Beck and Marty Masori in front of the net. 225, 230. What's, what's your call them? Quarter pounders? <laughs> first time that the Olympic team has been to North America. Their first visit here. Right foot tonight with a four to one lead. And advantage for the next 35 seconds. Rukov laying it along the boards here. From off the skate and bounced right to Kruselniski. And to Allison, stepped over the line, but so did Kruselniski, and that put the play offside. 23 seconds remaining in the Soviet power play. It's one of the trademarks of the Soviets, their ability to use their feet. There's been so many times tonight the passes have maybe been in their feet or almost by design. How they'll kick it, they don't even miss a stride. Kick it right onto this onto the stick to keep on going. It's amazing how they use their feet to control that puck. Used to be when they'd come to North America, a lot of their practices were conducted without sticks, like watching soccer on ice. Watch one of their workouts. I think that's something that has carried over. It's inherent in most of the European players, the way they, they handle the puck in the skates. Yes, it's no question about it. These things are, as you said, they're, they're done by design. The practice just doesn't happen. I don't think we practice that enough in North America. Oh, well, they just blew one by Gosselin there to make it five to one. Yeah, that's a little quick, that quick shot, and he just caught Mar Mario just sleeping on the darn thing. And again, it's not that big booming slap shot. It's just a little quick snap shot, and there's a textbook case right there. But I'm going to have to say that was a rather soft goal, and if goalie at any league should have picked that thing up. That was not screen. It was just a little quick shot. Mario, again, time he focused on the puck, it was behind him. And right Yeoman. now, he doesn't feel too good about that one. Now, your Yeoman getting his second goal of this game. It's a young man we told you earlier that they gave us absolutely no information on. He's a regular on the team. Where he came from, they're trying to hide him from NHL scouts. You've seen him tonight. Yeoman making it five to one. Scoring at the 11.05 mark. Only one second left. The penalty to Goslin. Nichols leads his way across the line. Got knocked down. And they came able to get it to the line, but no further. Kings moving in. Robitaille trying to cut through in front of the net. Got checked. Now Nichols comes in. Ernie Nichols. Most the center one that's deflected in front of the net. Bobatai is checked. Here's Nichols. He can't get around his band. And he makes a little left to center ice. Long pass into the skates and then onto the stick. And Goslin makes the save on Kaskin. He's in with it again. Drops it back to the blue line. The defenseman coming in late. Shot turned to side by Goslin. Just under eight minutes to play. Shane. Pass on its way to Nichols. Out of Lindholm, look at the traffic around him. Four Soviet players converging on the puck carrier, Lindholm. The Soviets are opening up now. They're playing a little bit more confidence, higher tempo. The thing in the L.A. is just a little frustrated. Lindholm to McSorley. Back to that Soviet goal. Ronnie McSorley giving a good, solid check again by that same number nine that hit him and decked him earlier. 
Altuve. Five to one. Hemick leading the Los Angeles Kings. Kings have never beaten the Soviet team here in L.A. I think the first two goals are sort of indicative of L.A.'s uh, preparation tonight, not take anything away from them, because I said, I, we know what's going through their mind, but they get that bouncing puck and they get that little deflection, they're down, and uh, another night if they have to do this stuff. Now the Kings in trouble as we pause for a regional break. Here we in the third period, your Yeoman's second goal, Igor Nikitin, has the only assist. There's Patter playing the puck in toward the corner for Mike Krusalinski. Control it. You can hear on the right wing. Lincoln brings it back. Soviets passing play into the center ice area. Zelopukin over the line. Trying to cut in. Put it in the slot. And Goslin able to make the save. See the reaction of the Soviet player. Number 23, Yashkin. Alexei Yashkin looking up. Hey, that should have been six. Oh, Goslin played, he played that one very well. He feels kind of embarrassed after the fifth goal. He's come up with a couple good saves prior to that, but this thing developed from their Soviets' defensive zone, and tell you, they moved up ice. A, a couple long passes, deflection at that red line, that far guy just coming down the weak side there, and he was home, and Wayne Gretzky looking at that, and he's saying, well, I told you so. That was probably a, a, a great exposition. At, Exhibition right there. So let's give it a shot. The rebound is banged in. The Kings get their second of the night. Keith Crowder trailing the play makes it five to two. Keith Crowder is happy to get that one. He hasn't scored yet this year. Coming off that injury, as they said, the River Tom Webster to said about Keith and how important he is to this hockey club. Even though he's not required to score a lot of goals here in Los Angeles, and he has done that in his in his time. Now watch this thing. All of a sudden, this play developed you know, develop for Los Angeles. And they came right back with the Soviets did there. Again, it's winning that race to that red line. People away from the puck busting. Those are the key things. And everybody that did not have the puck was moving, and that allows the puck to be moved faster. The Soviets had a great opportunity. Gosman stopped them. L.A. came right back, played the same type of thing. The last couple of minutes, boy, there was textbook hockey right there. Got the goal. Something to think about it went off his glove hand, and then Crowder was there. And now Ellie can't hold the pass as the Kings tried to set something up. We have a little less than six minutes to play in the third period. Five to two. Kimmich leading the game. Sorley takes another hit. Well, Marty Mattoni, I'll tell you, he's been he's been run at, not run at, but hit more tonight. He usually gets in the national hockey league. But that's the game Marty plays. He'll take it and give it. Whoever he's playing. Now Ellie can center ice, steps over the line, but a teammate up ahead of him, and the whole thing is offside. Himmick leading 5 to 2. We'll be back in a moment. Take a look at some of the hits given and taken. That's McSorley. Boom. How do you do? Well, that right, Milton has hit him a couple of times. Marty's got a piece of him. And I tell you, as I said, Marty's always involved. Oh. <laughs> and he's, but again, you, you can admire it. You can admire Marty that he just comes to play like that all the time. I guess what, what people get a little frustrated is all of a sudden some people that don't touch anybody in the league and then there's an international game, they're hitting everybody, but you can't say that for Marty. I think of Marty's involvement in a current video, National Hockey League hits it's, uh, Marty just now. Talking about uh, the art of hitting and taking a hit. <laughs> a demonstration tonight. Five minutes remaining in the third period. Every time you watch Los Angeles practice, he's always out there late. He's always working on his game, Jake. And today, today he's he's been out. He's the last one to leave. has to be happy with his team. The game earlier this year, in fact, on uh, November 14th, one of their regular uh, season league games, they were up, uh, in fact, beat Red Army by a score of 5-1. to one. The only goal the Red Army scored was in the final minute of play. Last year, his team beat Red Army three times, tied them uh, the other game. The Hemming team won the silver medal. This year, they had that uh, 
A 5-1 win on the 14th of November. They've been off for just over a week. Midway point in their season. Live in North America on Friday. If you believe, came without papers that would get them into Canada for a game at Edmonton on Wednesday. It's been a, a day of back and forth with the Canadian Embassy here in Los Angeles. Traveling papers and clearance for them to uh, go into Canada tomorrow. Strange that I guess we've heard about free trade in Bradford. But they can move back and forth at will. Jigs, earlier you are talking about the draft choices here in the Russian. Tonight we're looking for that youngster. That won the Aksuda. Rangers draft. Yeah, Aksuda did not suit up. They didn't bring him. Oh, he was one of the ones they stepped, uh, kept back for the World Juniors. Right. They are uh, very high on him. He's uh, going to Finland for the World Junior Championships. There are two Soviet teams over here right now. The other one is in Canada, but playing the Canadian national team in a series of games. The team is being called their Olympic team, not their national team, but their Olympic team at the moment. This is Zelik over on the right side. The Soviets up with the puck. Beating tied to two as they dump one in. Fort, Harry Beck. Harry McSorley with it now. Rulin is out on the ice, but McSorley is moving down the off wing. Away from Rakhmatulin at the moment. Lindholm knocked off the puck. McElin with him. And pull it as it's played around behind the net. Yaski makes his way to the center ice area. Gave it to Kortaldov. Andre Kortaldov for the shot that went wide of the net. It's right out in front again and was picked up by Makula. Nico Makula, finished player now with Los Angeles. Trade with the New York Islanders last week. Talking to Wayne Gretzky, he said, so, you know, Jake's from the Kings and the Islanders play next. We'll wear white uniforms, you guys wear black uniforms, referring to the Islanders. There's so many that have moved back and forth to the two teams. Lindholm on the back, and he scores! Kings get two in a row. Lindholm. They count Lindholm scoring at the 17-23 mark. Los Angeles team, as we know, can put the puck away. Even though they don't have their full lineup here right now, they still got enough time. Maybe they get one, pull a goalie, tie it, beat him in overtime. Lindholm, yeah, just camped out in front. Marty Besorley going in there, tying up the defense, and then getting out of there. That working behind the net. Lindholm just found himself wide open. Wide open again. He just redirected that pass somewhat. A little soft backhand pass right there. Didn't get good wood on it. Sort of handcuffed it. Soviet goalkeeper. There's Robitai, resting one wide of the net. Held in by Waters, lost it on the boards, and the Soviets failed to fit over center ice. Bernie Nichol steps over the line, cross ice for the pass into the skates and Zelopukin. Benning plays it in around the boards. Robitai couldn't pick that back of the net, and it did, and gave it to Nichols. Nichols looks for Bukestad out front. He's well covered with center, Bukestad shoots. Kermiakov makes the save and holds on. L.A. getting some life, trailing 5-3. to three. We'll be back in just a moment. This man has been called upon to make 28 uh, saves tonight. He's given up three goals. It's the Soviet goaltender. Look at this play develop. I'll tell you, you talk about mirroring Wayne Gretzky. That's Wayne Gretzky sort of office back there. Bernie Nichols set up, set up off the specter. He waited for somebody to get loose. Scotty Bukes did find, got loose. And Bernie made a great pass. Well, Bukes did one time that... Makala rounds the net. Holds the puck. Holds it. Centers one to Crowder. Crowder puts it in the goal mouth and he was grabbed and taken down and there's going to be a penalty on the play. Balgain. Albert Balgain is going to the penalty box for holding. Los Angeles with a man advantage here in a minute 47 seconds remaining in this game. Jerry Kopp has made a couple good saves tonight. Especially off Houston right there, but now he's louder again, just working hard, fighting off the check as he can. A little bit clear if you see him on the up, up part of the left screen there, just his arm was up early and automatically. You know, 140 seconds, 147 left right here, Jake's plenty of time. You start looking well if he can pull, get one here, maybe pull a goalie and tie it, or maybe even say, maybe the last minute or so. Kelly Rudy's going to say, well, maybe we're going to pull my partner right now and go six against four with 147. I think they'll do it for 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, but let's just see if they pull Gosman. 
Uh, Rudy not playing in the game tonight. They have a big game with their division rival, Vancouver, here on Wednesday. Then they go out on the road for about six games in a row, I think it is. Nichols with a chance, poked at the rebound. Hands up in the corner, Makala with it. Trying to get it to Nichols in time. Around Nichols, and they slipped away from it. Centered with it, broken up. And this Hemick team is able to clear it through center right. That was a great pass by Makala. Bernie Nichols had his hands up in the air. He thought he buried that one. Roslin is on the bench now as Robitaille comes over the line. Luke Robitaille looks toward Duchesne. Makala goes to make Sorley. Sorley through a screen, that's the point of the net. Robitaille sets it up for Nichols. Ushelinski out in front. Robitaille couldn't hold the pass and hit it with an empty net. Fired down the ice and goes on right into the middle of the net. The empty netter makes it 6-3 to three and a shorthanded goal. Well, that only had a couple chances. Cher Cherikov came up big for him and held him in there. And then the, the scoot penalty killing by the Soviets just got that thing up ice and just buried it. If they do something a little different here, the Soviets. They don't turn their backs to create a blind spot. They will look at ice and let the goalie worry about the guy behind the net jigs. If you had noticed that, a lot of times North America will be turning around, facing back there. And then the people are coming from behind your backs. And those are the blind spots. Soviets said, I'm, we're going to look up ice. We're going to get as much a look at the ice as possible. And we're not going to worry about the guy behind the goal line. That's the goalie's responsibility. The team that is leading the Soviet elite division leads here 6 to 3, 25 seconds remaining. Other 15 teams in that league, most of them, when they take the six week break, go out of the country for tournaments and exhibition games and Hemic, the way to a victory to open up their six game tour. Game center one was fired wide in the net by Crowder. Shot down into the Los Angeles zone where it's handled by Mario Gossaman. Duchesne rounds the net. In the middle of the ice, Steve Duchesne steps over the line, gave it to Bukestad, he shoots. It's the outside of the net. It came off the goalkeeper and into the bench. But outside the post, we have five seconds left. Soviets there almost like it was a prevent defense, like in football. They didn't forecheck anybody. They just had those four guys backed up at the blue line. Duchesne makes a nice move there at the blue line to get the puck to Scotty Bukestad. This guy, Scotty Bukestad, he had a great year a few years ago with Minnesota North Stars playing on the wing with Neil Broughton, Dino Cicerelli. 44 big goals, but he never really quite recovered from that year. He was hurt a couple times after that, Jake. So sort of a frustrating last two or three years for Scotty Bukestad. Right again at the start of this season. Really beginning to put the numbers up over at New Haven in the American Hockey League. Play stopped here with one second remaining. Bukestad has had 10 goals and six assists in 19 games that he has played. So depth in the National Hockey League is so important. The development of people in the, in the minor leagues is important. Young, young people, maybe get some veterans, their game back in order. Now 13,513 came to the Great Western Forum tonight. You see the congratulations amongst the coaches. Hemmick has won it by a score of 6-3. to three. Now the traditional handshake as the two teams meet at center ice. Great one another. Well, I would think you'd agree, Herb, that uh, Hemmick has some very impressive players. While none of them that we saw on the ice tonight have been drafted by National Hockey League teams, there are some prospects out there. Yes, you pointed out early, Jake, this is a young hockey club. They were real tentative at the start, and I thought they may be a little intimidated, but the game picked up that second period. They got a couple, I think, kind of, well, soft goals, lucky goals to get them going, give them a little breathing room that first period. But again, you have to understand the mentality of what's going with the, through the minds of the Los Angeles Kings. Come off a big win Saturday night against the New York Rangers.